the dragon depicted on the Sarmatian icon is accurate, and it had a religious significance, representing the sky demon or heavenly dragon scaring their enemies and apparently providing the direction of the wind. Called a Draco, the symbol is commonly known to have existed with the Scythians, but was also adopted by the Dacians and the Parthians. Overall, for Sarmatia, I would say it's accurate. The Romano-British. Unsurprisingly at first, we find another Draco on the Roman-British icon. Historically, the Romans adopted the Draco after their conquest of Dacia, becoming the symbol of a cohort. In Britain, large numbers of Sarmatian cavalry were stationed, so the dragon became a part of native British imagery, which I think is super interesting. Some say that this cultural influence is the root for such things like Uther Pendragon, father of King Arthur, and the Welsh dragon on their flag. Welcome to Total War Profiled, and today we are looking into the accuracy and inspiration behind faction emblems in Rome Total War's Barbarian Invasion. Now, a lot of these symbols are odd and have debated meanings. I am going by what my sources say, but there may be some disagreements here and there. Also, thank you to Chapley1, who did most of the research and scripting for today's video. The Western and the Eastern Roman Empires, the most recognisable emblems of the entire game. Both halves of the Roman Empire use the Chai Rho sign, the first two letters of Christ's name in Greek, called the Labarum when used on standards. It was made official by Constantine in 312 AD, before the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, replacing the Imperial Eagle. The colours are red and purple, both associated with Rome. Red for military and power, used to represent the West, and purple for wealth, used to represent the East. Goths and Ostrogoths. Their icons depict a Greek cross, so one with its four arms of the same length. Widely used in early Christianity and in the Orthodox Church, even to this day. It has its relevance here as the Goths mostly converted to Arianism, the Vandals, as they had settled in the area of Silesia in the 3rd century AD, the Vandals came into contact with the Sarmatians. Knowledge was exchanged, and thus the Vandals acquired a reputation of horsemanship of their own. For example, Marcus Aurelius demanded tribute from them in the form of horsemen for the legions. That's how good they were with these horses. This explains their faction icon, the Huns. Among all the barbarian peoples who invaded the Roman Empire, the Huns were not Germanic, but rather hailed from Central Asia. Renowned for their superb riding skills, it's only natural that their symbol should be a bow, horse archery being the traditional form of warfare for the steppe peoples. Black is their faction colour, used to reflect the scorched earth, they left behind them. The Alemanni. The Alemanni have an old Germanic pagan symbol, known as the Valknut. Why the Alemanni specifically have this? It's unclear. The Franks. The icon clearly represents a lark, but it's difficult to find a link with the Frankish tribes. The lark was associated with the Gauls before their conquest by Caesar, supposedly, for example, using them on their winged helmets, like Asterix. That winged helmet was elevated to the rank of a national symbol by the French in the 40s, but there's no proper evidence it was ever adopted by the Franks. The Saxons, they have a stag, which was a very iconic religious symbol of Anglo-Saxon culture. Burgundy, like the Alemanni, the three-horned design reminiscent of pagan art. 
it's often known as the Horns of Odin. Why give it to this faction specifically? Again, we don't know. Lombardi. We could not find anything linking the Lombards to zombie bears. The Celts. The symbol is a triestleon, used by multiple Mediterranean civilizations, but especially by the Irish Christians from the 4th century AD, and is generally used amongst many Celts. The Roxolani. They have horns, probably just to signify that they were nomads, but we, we really couldn't find much linking this to the Roxolani, really. I am quite sure the developers were going through the same thing, like, they're not a that well-known culture compared to the rest of them in the game. The Slavs. The dragon slash snake, interestingly enough, is a common element in Slavic mythology, named the Zmei in Russian, and, and representing evil forces, protective spirits, or natural elements of the water. The Berbers. Although the crescent moon could be directly attributed to Muslim influences, the Berbers at the time were obviously not converted yet and did not speak Arabic, obviously. But the crescent was used widely by the Carthaginians, who took it from their founding city in Phoenicia. Thus, the use might have spread to native tribes of Africa, as we see in game. The Sassanid Empire, as a Zoroastrian Empire, the Sassanids bear one of its most famous symbols on its icon, the Fa-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra. It goes back to the inception, great film, of the religion itself, and it dates back as far as Darius I, the Great in the 5th century BC, as I found it um, on his tomb. It is also used by the Persian Empire in Alexander Total War. Overall, I love all of these. Each one has some historical backing or cultural backing in some way. Some like the Roxolani are a little bit odd, and some like Burgundy and the Alemanni. You know, the symbol doesn't reflect them, but, you know, it's, it's close enough. But then again, what could they really use? How much can we really expect from the developers? I doubt I could have done much better. Thank you to Chapley1 for doing most of the research and script for today's video. I've been Melkor, and this is Talk to War Profiled. Episodes every Saturday. Like and subscribe to get notified of more. Share this video with anyone you think may be interested. Almost at 10k subs now. It will be amazing if I can hit that soon. Until the next one, goodbye.